I often receive questions that sound something like this. I tried to tell my friends, co-workers, parents, pastor, spouse about the new world order, and they think I'm totally crazy. What should I do? There are a lot of things to say about this, and several ways that I could answer this question. I'll start by addressing the people who are brand new to the idea of the New World Order, as they are most often the people who ask this type of question. I would want you to know that you're in a kind of phase that lasts about one or two years that just about everyone who has ever fallen down the rabbit hole of conspiracy information goes through. I think it should have a clinical name like short-term New World Order Freakout Syndrome or something like that. In reality, this quote-unquote syndrome is actually less about the New World Order and more about human psychology. You've just found out that most of what you thought you knew about the world isn't true at all. That can be traumatizing, especially for people who put a lot of stock into what they know about the world. Most males fall into this category. That is, we really like to be able to explain how the world works to people. It's just how we are. But it's certainly not limited to males. When you fall down the rabbit hole, it's like you've had your mind washed. Everything that you thought you knew has been swept away, and you begin this mad dash to try to rebuild your knowledge about the world. And all of what you're finding out about this world in that search seems to suggest an epicness of great proportions. And it is epic. But I promise you, once you have enough information to be able to tell the truths from the half truths and the outright lies that are out there, everything will get a bit easier to parse. I mean, at this point in a person's rebuilding process, they can give about as much weight to the idea that fluoride or vaccines are bad, something that I believe is on the true side, as they do that reptilians created the moon and planet X will crash into the earth next week, or that the mark of the beast is attained by listening to Beyonce. You need to understand that you are a sitting duck for all kinds of wrong stuff at this early stage because you have been mentally traumatized and you're staying up nights sweating as you're trying to determine what's true and what's not, trying to rebuild your worldview. First, I'd like to say to you that this is normal and that you will get through it and that you should continue to try to figure out what's going on with the world and rebuilding your paradigm, but try to do it from good sources. I know that's next to impossible right now because you're not even sure what criteria to look for in a good source yet. But if you're a Christian and you know the Word of God, rely on God's gift of discernment. Look for the fruits of a teacher. Are they bearing good fruit or bad fruit? But you should be rebuilding your paradigm with the goal of doing the job relatively quickly and getting to a point where you are stable and productive and not scaring the crap out of all the people that love you. Because here's the thing, you do sound crazy to them when you are experiencing short-term New World Order Freakout Syndrome. You're super intense. It's all that you want to talk about. And this is probably true even if you're only interested in the somewhat normal topics like financial stuff or 9-11. But it's even more true if you're more interested in the 101 flavors of fringe stuff. Imagine if an extremely intense person was trying to tell you that HARP caused a recent hurricane and that the Nephilim spaceships had something to do with it, meanwhile the Pope is drinking blood with Obama and Britney Spears. But let's assume for the sake of argument that everything that you're super excited about is true and important for them to know. After all, I know that a lot of the fringe stuff can be true too, or at least parts of it. You have to realize that it's too much for some people to take in, and that there are all kinds of reasons for this, which we'll talk about later. But don't take it personally. It's just too much for some people to take. You basically have to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. You know the person you're trying to convince, right? And if they're being resistant, despite your tireless efforts, just let it be. For some people, all you're going to do is burn the bridge of the relationship even more. If they're going to find out about what you want them to know, they will need to do it on their own. Some people won't learn this from you and need to figure it out for themselves. You planted a seed, trust me, they took it into consideration somewhere in there, and if they see something on their own that confirms it, they'll believe you down the road. I can't tell you how many times people have said to me, you know, I always thought you were crazy back then, but since then I'm starting to think you were right about so-and-so all along. But continuing to hammer them with it is only going to be bad for your relationship at that particular point. 
It's like when someone is involved in one of those multi-level marketing things, and you know all they ever want to talk about is getting you to buy into it. You eventually don't want to hang around with that person anymore. So I'm suggesting in those cases, let them breathe a bit. I assure you that that person's relationship means more than having them know that the Federal Reserve is bad. If they see that you're going back to being a normal person in your interactions with them again, not freaking out anymore, they're going to be far more inclined to believe it. Have a normal conversation with them. You are tuned into God's Property Radio. Here are your hosts, Sam and Dan.